Hi, I'm Linda. Before I continue with my story, please like and subscribe for more real-life tales. Now, let's dive into my life under one roof with Mike and his mother, Molly. Living with Mike and Molly was never easy. Molly, with her sharp tongue and constant belittling, made every day a challenge. You're just a leech, Linda. Useless and fat, she'd yell across the house, her voice sharp enough to cut through the thickest walls. Mike, bless his heart, just sat quietly always the peacemaker, but never quite making peace. You really should start taking better care of yourself, Linda. Look at you, Molly would chide as I prepared dinner after a long day at work. Her words stung, especially when I was doing my best to keep our home running smoothly. Mom, please, Mike would finally mutter, his voice low, trying not to escalate the situation. But Molly was relentless. Oh, don't mom please me, Mike. You know I'm right. She does nothing around here. I don't even know why you married her. The truth was, I managed our finances, paid the bills, and dealt with Mike's debts, which Molly conveniently ignored. But I kept my head down, not wanting to stir more trouble. That was, until one particularly rough day. While at work, my phone buzzed nonstop. Text after text rolled in, each more abusive than the last. You should really look at yourself before using my son's money. Maybe skip a meal or two, it wouldn't hurt. The screen lit up with Molly's venom. I tried to focus on my work, my hands shaking with each new notification. When I finally got home, the atmosphere was icy. Mike avoided my gaze, and Molly sat in the living room, an eerie smile playing on her lips. Got my messages, did you? Molly's voice was cold, cutting. It's time you heard the truth from someone. I set my bag down, steadying myself. Molly, I pay for this house and I've been paying your son's debts. What are you trying to achieve with this? Molly scoffed, her disbelief evident. Oh, please, Linda. All you do is spend Mike's money. You're a burden, and it's high time you left. Mike finally spoke up, his voice shaky. Mom, that's enough. Linda does a lot for us. But Molly was on a roll, and nothing would stop her now. She's leaving, Mike. I've made sure of it. The moment I walked in and saw the envelope, a chill ran down my spine. Pulling out the papers, my heart sank. There it was in black and white, divorce papers with Mike's and my names on them. But something was off. The signatures were all wrong. Molly stood by the kitchen counter, watching me with a smirk. It's better this way. You'll be out soon and we can have peace. She sneered, her words dripping with venom. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my composure. You forged our signatures? Do you even understand the legal consequences of this? Molly waved off my concerns with a dismissive hand. Oh, please. Who's going to believe you? Mike will back me up, won't you, dear? Mike, looking like he was caught between a rock and a hard place, finally found his voice. Mom, this isn't right. Linda, I didn't know she was going to do this. But Molly wasn't done. I did it for us, Mike, to get rid of the dead weight. Her glare turned back to me. You should be thanking me. I'm setting you free from a life you don't deserve. I clenched my fists, feeling the injustice of her words. And what life do you think you deserve, Molly? Because here's something you clearly don't know. I paused for effect, watching as her eyes narrowed in suspicion. I've been the one paying for everything in this house. Every bill, every loan, every debt, mine. I pulled out my phone, showing her the records of payments and bank statements. See this? My name, my money. Molly's face went pale, her smugness evaporating as she scanned the documents. That, that can't be. Mike, tell her she's lying. Mike shook his head, his voice low. She's not, Mom. Linda's been handling our finances since we got married. The reality of her dependence on me seemed to hit Molly all at once. But, but why? Why would you pay for everything? Because I loved Mike, and I was trying to build a life with him, despite you. I shot back, my anger rising. And because I believed in taking responsibility, something you clearly know nothing about. Molly staggered back as if my words were physical blows. You, you have no right to speak to me that way. I have every right, especially in my own house. I stepped closer, my resolve hardening. You tried to destroy my marriage with lies and forgery. You've made my life hell because you couldn't stand to see your son happy with someone who actually cares about him. Mike interjected, Mom, Linda's right. What you did is unforgivable. You need to fix this. Molly looked between us, her scheme crumbling around her. I... 
I just wanted what's best for us. No, Molly. You wanted what's best for you, and you were willing to ruin our lives to get it. I held her gaze, my decision clear. But it ends now. I'm not going to let you control us anymore. As I stood there, the weight of the lies exposed and the truth revealed, I knew this was just the beginning. There was no way I was going to let Molly get away with what she had done. The battle lines were drawn, and it was time for me to take back control of my life. Molly wiped her eyes, her voice a whisper. What do you want from me, Linda? How can we fix this? There's no easy fix, Molly. You've broken my trust and nearly destroyed our marriage, I replied. If there's any chance of repairing anything, it starts with you accepting responsibility and making amends. Real amends. The room fell silent, the weight of the confrontation hanging heavy in the air. Molly nodded slowly, her resolve seeming to firm up as she processed the gravity of her actions. I'll do whatever it takes, she finally said, her voice barely audible. I'm sorry, Linda. Truly sorry. But apologies weren't enough to heal the wound so quickly. As I looked at Molly, I knew this was just the beginning of a long journey toward possibly mending our fractured family, if it could even be mended at all. The confrontation had laid bare the depth of Molly's deception, and it was up to her to prove whether her remorse was genuine, or just another manipulation. The morning after our heated confrontation was unusually quiet. The silence gave me the clarity I needed, and I decided it was time to take definitive action. While Mike and Molly were out, possibly trying to find a way to mend things, or just escaping the tension, I began packing my things. Each item I placed into boxes marked a step towards reclaiming my life. By the time I heard the front door open, signaling their return, I was ready. My bags were packed, and I stood by the doorway, keys in hand. I'm leaving, and I'm taking my things. The house and the car, which are also in my name, are mine, I announced without waiting for them to settle in. The words felt heavy but necessary. Mike's face drained of color, his eyes darting between me and the bags at my feet. Linda, please, let's talk about this. There's got to be a way to work things out. Molly, who had been a picture of confidence and control just days before, now looked small and frazzled. You can't leave us like this, Linda. We have nothing without you. Please. The desperation in her voice was palpable. But I had heard enough pleas and seen enough tears to last a lifetime. I've made up my mind. I can't stay here and be part of this toxicity anymore. But where will you go? Mike asked, his voice cracking under the strain. Anywhere but here, I replied firmly. I need to start fresh, somewhere I can be appreciated and respected. Molly stepped forward, reaching out as if she could physically pull me back from the brink. Linda, I'm sorry. I really am. Can't you see I'm trying to change? I stepped back, avoiding her touch. It's too little, too late, Molly. You've shown your true colors and I can't unsee them. You wanted me out, and now I'm leaving on my terms. Mike looked torn, his loyalty to his mother warring with his love for me. Linda, if there's anything I can do, take care of your mother, Mike. She needs you now more than ever, I said, softening slightly. It wasn't his fault, but he had made his choices, too. As I turned to leave, the finality of the moment hit me. I was leaving behind a life I had tried so hard to build. But as I drove away, the weight lifting off my shoulders told me I had made the right decision. Behind me, I left a house now too big for the two people who remained, a reminder of what happens when manipulation and deceit are allowed to run rampant. For Molly and Mike, the real struggle was just beginning, as they faced the harsh reality of their financial situation without me. As for me, the road ahead was uncertain, but it promised a chance at peace and genuine happiness, free from the shadows of the past. Now, I breathe easier, living on my own terms, surrounded by tranquility instead of turmoil. In the weeks following my departure, the stark reality of their financial predicament hit Molly and Mike hard. Without my financial support, they couldn't keep up with the mortgage or bills, and eviction became a looming threat. Despite the chaos she faced, Molly tried repeatedly to reach out to me. Her messages filled with apologies and pleas for me to return, but each one went unanswered. My decision was final. I had realized my worth was far greater than how I'd been valued in that house, and there was no turning back. In this newfound solitude, I found peace. I rented a small apartment bathed in sunlight, where the mornings were quiet and the evenings peaceful. Here, 
I didn't walk on eggshells, but instead walked on a path that I paved for myself, one lined with respect and self-care. The community around me, once distant, became a source of strength and friendship. My story, though personal, wasn't unique, and sharing it became a way to connect and heal. It resonated with many, becoming a beacon for those who had also felt undervalued and manipulated. Never let anyone define your worth became a mantra I shared, which echoed in the hearts of those who heard my tale. Molly's and Mike's struggles continued as they faced the harshness of their new reality. Molly took on a part-time job at a local grocery store, and Mike found occasional work as a handyman. The pride they had once taken in their status and material possessions was replaced by a desperate scramble to make ends meet. I sometimes wonder about them, about what lessons, if any, they learned from the ordeal. I hope in their own way, they found a semblance of redemption, or at least an understanding of the consequences of their actions. As for me, the path forward is filled with possibilities. I've enrolled in night classes for graphic design, a passion I'd put aside for the sake of my marriage. Now it's my future. Every project, every assignment, is a step toward a career that's mine alone, a declaration of my independence. Looking back, I realized that leaving was not just about escaping a toxic situation, but about reclaiming my life and rewriting my story on my own terms. It was about showing that self-respect and personal worth are worth fighting for, and that no one has the right to take those away. And so, as I sit here in my new space, Surrounded by my sketches and designs, I am not just surviving. I am thriving. The journey here wasn't easy, but it was necessary. And every day, I am grateful for the freedom and the fresh start that I fought so hard to achieve. That brings us to the end of our story. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you believe that people should always seek independence in relationships? Or are there times when compromises are necessary for the sake of peace? Please share your opinions in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video if you found the story compelling. Subscribe for more stories like this and join our community as we explore the complex dynamics of personal relationships and self-worth. Your engagement means a lot and helps us continue to bring these narratives to light. Let's get the conversation started.